Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. So we got me to be present here today, not only as a French ambassador, but also as somebody who might be told that has a deep, keen interest in climate change and trying to move things forward. My credentials comes from Kyoto Protocol negotiation at that time, but also through the recent negotiation of the Rio Plus 20 uh, outcome on sustainable development. It has a close link with climate change. It has uh, and the equality of reason to reach a successful outcome. Now, I, I feel embarrassed because um, we are in a session where we should look for action and for recipes for results and success. I can promise that Paris will be a success, unless you decide so. I mean, the that, as we're discussing with Lehman, that uh, um, we, 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 the French government, have been very clear that we were taking a very risky challenge by, by proposing to host this COP21 conference. We knew it was a very high risk challenge. We knew that, but despite of that, we accepted, we accepted the challenge. And by the way, I remember my Minister for Foreign Affairs very often quoting that when he, he applied for France to be the host of the conference, he had a lot of very nice colleagues coming to him and saying, good luck. <laughs> Which means that a success in Paris will be probably very highly difficult, but it's worth trying. And we try to put together all the efforts in order to achieve it. But the recipe is partially in the hands of the government, it's partially in the hands also of the general public, of the civil society, and I'll try to explain why. What we try to do as France in order to, to, to promote an agreement is to use the combined forces of all our tools, our diplomacy, but also our economy, all our networks of influence. For that, since now about two years, because we have started, even we were officially appointed as the next uh, chair of, of the COP, we've tried to work first with the Peruvian presidency, and now as France, to mobilize worldwide, not only the governments, but also the civil societies, all the people who can play a role in fighting climate change. Business, research, all the networks of influence, NGOs, political parties, um, women, association, because gender is a very important dimension, um, trade unions, youth, and we are working on those two, two aspects. The first one is to try to push negotiation forward. You know it's a very complicated one. It's a UN negotiation. You have 196 partners that at the end of the day must unanimously agree. It's, it's a challenge. In order to do this, we have a text which is going forward. It's 86 pages with a lot of brackets everywhere. Probably the most often quoted name is not climate in this negotiation, it's brackets. Please add a bracket there. So you have uh, 86 pages of bracketed text. If we have an agreement, we must reach probably no more than 20 pages when the real negotiation will start. So some weeks before COP21. And this is the first stream of efforts we are currently trying to achieve, reducing the number of brackets, multiplying the opportunities to meet, dialogue, discuss, so that we simplify as much as possible the text, so that, unlike in Copenhagen, we will arrive at the COP with something which is reasonably big, not too big. But at the end of the day, we still are ambitious. We want not only an agreement, we want a legally binding agreement, we want a universal agreement, and we want a substantial, sustainable agreement. But in order to do this, it's not enough. We need to work also on something else. And this something else is what are called the intended nationally determined contributions. I know it's not, very, it's not a vocabulary that is very familiar with the general public, but it's very important. It's an effort that we are trying to promote where states do state what they will, whatever they reason agreement or not agreement, we hope it will come together with the agreement, what they intend to do as precisely as possible, as strongly as possible to contribute to the general effort. 
So far, it's reasonably successful, but not enough. So far, we have about 40 countries which has made commitments representing over 30% of the world emissions. It's a contribution, but it's not enough. And that's the reason for which we still are pushing countries to state what are the inten their intentions. The third element, the third pillar of an agreement will be on technologies and financing. Obviously, climate change is not something you solve with an agreement. You need solutions. We strongly believe as France that solutions are already there and should be used. And for that, you need financing. And so to mobilize financing so that those solutions are implemented. But we think also that there is a huge room for improvement of those solutions, huge room for research. And there also, you need financing. But not only financing. You need a real mobilization from business. You need a real mobilization from universities, research centers, from all the people who can promote those effective solutions that will help tackle climate change. That's a very important, this third pillar is a very important element of COP21. We want to demonstrate, as was said in the previous panel, that speaking about climate change is not only speaking about doomsday and when it will happen. We want to really establish that speaking of climate change is possible because there is an agenda for solution and that speaking about climate change or tackling climate change is also speaking about an agenda for growth, for jobs, for transformation of our economies. Because what we are aiming at is a different kind of economy. I wouldn't say a green economy, but an economy without CO2. And in order to make it happen, we need to change our way of producing, we, make, we need to change our way of consuming, we need, in fact, to change of our ways of looking at what means growth. The fourth pillar, which is equally important to prepare for a potential success in Paris, will be in particular to succeed in getting civil society acting and standing. It means that we need to change the way we look at those international negotiations where everybody awaits that there is a wonderful, miraculous result of the negotiation. What we, we hope as France, what we try to promote, is having the stakeholders also play their full role. It's a long-standing position of France to have these stakeholders being equally important in the international negotiation. That's something we promoted and rather successfully during Rio plus 20, when we made agreed by all the countries in the world that together with the countries and national governments, which have a specific legitimacy, there was a specific legitimacy also in the stakeholders. The stakeholders are the NGOs, business, local governments, it's also youth, it's also women, it's also local indigenous communities, it's also agriculture. All those seven main category, major groups within these stakeholders can play their role. And we hope that for Paris, those stakeholders will play a major role, both before the conference and during the conference. Before the conference, it will be by mobilizing, by stating very strongly that they want not only a conference, but an outcome, and not any outcome, but a successful one. So a part of the responsibility will be especially in your hands. I, would, I wouldn't say only in Ireland, but all over the world. And the second thing is, we hope that also those stakeholders, or those groups of stakeholders, will be able to take some commitments, show and lead by example. And there is something which is actually being prepared. It's a, a, a sort of, of, of register commitment, a, commit, yeah, a register of commitments taken by civil society, that which is being prepared by the UN. It's a, it's a network, it will be internet-based, it's called NASCA, where in fact the stakeholders and the major groups will be able to say, okay, not only we want an outcome, but this is the way we are ready to contribute to the outcome. And this also will add up 
in order to create the mobilization and give legitimacy to uh, the, uh, the, 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 the COP. We are reasonably hopeful that we will achieve a result, a significant result in Paris. We don't want to paint, you know, with rosy uh, colors uh, the situation today. It's worrying. It's less at this stage than we would have expected. At the same time, we are still confident and we are doing our uh, major efforts. We think that we can succeed, but if we succeed, it won't be the end of the path. It will just be the beginning. We think that through this agreement that we hope to achieve in Paris, we will not just after that go quietly at home and say everything is solved. We think we'll enter into a full new phase where there will be a certain number of things that will need to happen. Not only those commitments when they will be taken, they will need to be implemented and so to be verified and monitored. And this is a very big challenging element. But the second is that we will need to further boost a certain number of changes that are gradually happening, but which are not completely happening, and we think are very important for the future. The first thing is full participation, role of civil society. In the new phase after an agreement, the role of civil society will be as important as before this agreement, even more important. Civil society will have to take the agreement into its hands and to be the first one to verify it is being implemented and eventually to promote even more action than the one who will have been agreed. The second thing is we think that te technology will be essential. Technology is already providing certain solutions. We think we have a lot still to discover. We have a lot still to invent. And the boost in favor of finding solutions will need to be, to be very high. So it will need investment. It will need an endeavor taken by both business, but also research and probably civil society. And third thing which we think will be important is an agreement is important, but mentality change will still have to take place. We are just at the beginning of a new phase, we hope. For that, we will have to adapt what means a new society adapted to constantly fight climate change. Because this won't be done in one day, it will be done along the course of several generations. And from this point of view, we think that a lot of things need still to happen. I was listening in the previous panels that was happening in this room about the question of the implementation by financial sector and the role that the financial sector could play. It's absolutely true that the role of the financial sector in particular will be very important. Depending where the money goes, actions are possible or not possible. Things are favored or not favored. From this point of view, we think as France that the financial sector has a very important role to play. I regret that the representative of the Bank of Ireland is no more in the room, to my knowledge, but it's not only him. It's all of those who are, in fact, orienting money, orienting investments. And from this point of view, our embassy here in Ireland, as our French embassies all over the world, will also very much liaise with these investors with the financial sector to, to carry the message and to try to convince them about the important role they have to play. At the end of the day, I'd like to quote, I think, which major thing, the major sentence for uh, Paris. There is no plan B because there is no planet B. <laughs> it was General Secretary Ban Ki-moon who made this very, very insightful statement. In order to achieve a success in Paris, once again, what will be key is not only to have skillful negotiator, not only a skillful presidency, and I hope France will be up to the challenge, and I'm sure France will be up to the challenge, but what will be important is you. As I already had the opportunity to say, 
the mobilization of civil society, the strength of the message you will express, not only after the success or eventually the non-success of the conference, but before, so that all the decision maker will feel that they can be confident in your support if they have, you know, courageous decision to take. If they can feel this, maybe we'll have a better chance to achieve an agreement in Paris. If they feel you are not interested, you're not ready to mobilize, you're not ready you know, to act within your family circles, your parishes, your groups, your clubs, in your countries, then the encouragement for the solution will be less. And this is probably what is at stake, and I will finish with that today. It's a, not only a nego successful negotiation, it's not only a question of skillful negotiators, it's a question of effective civil society mobilization because the decision makers act also upon the pressure, the feeling they resent coming from you. Thank you.